So the aims of this particular talk are to understand what the tests are and what they mean and to start thinking about basic interpretation. So what is myeloma? If this topic is completely new to you, I suggest you go and have a look first before carrying on with the lecture. So I'm going to assume you know something about it. So just a quick recap, it's a bone marrow malignancy caused by a clonal population of abnormal plasma cells. And these are a type of B lymphocyte. These secrete immunoglobulins and these are monoclonal again and they're therefore non-functioning immunoglobulins. So it's a combination of too many of these plasma cells in the marrow and too many of these immunoglobulins in the circulation that cause the problems. So the plasma cells themselves can infiltrate the bone marrow, leading to anemia and low platelets. The circulating immunoglobulins can cause bone disease and renal disease. The plasma cells can also form solid tumours called plasmacytomas, and these can be found anywhere in the body. And all of this leads to an impaired immune system, too much bad stuff and not very much functioning polyclonal stuff happening. It's treatable, but it is not curable. So this is a typical set of myeloma screens. So at the top, you'll see the immunoglobulin panel, looking at the different levels of G, A and M. You'll see the serum electrophoresis, and that tells us whether or not a monoclonal band has been detected. And the paraprotein level quantifies this, telling us how much it is. At the bottom, you'll see the serum-free light chains. This is also a blood test. And this looks at how many of the individual immunoglobulin chains are floating around and the ratio. And we'll talk about this more in a minute. So let's have a closer look at the blood test. So the immunoglobulin screen tells us the detectable levels of IgM, IgG and IgA. Increases in these can be either polyclonal or monoclonal. So when we have a look at the diagram on the bottom left, we can see a plasma cell secreting immunoglobulins. In a normal person, the light chain and heavy chains will be different from cell to cell. The body is able to make massive variety of these immunoglobulins through different mechanisms. In myeloma, each of these immunoglobulins is completely identical. And you need to have a think about how that's going to function in the immune system, i.e. it doesn't. The paraprotein test will detect the presence of a monoclonal protein. So if there is no monoclonal protein, you won't see anything in the results. But if there's something there, it will quantify it in grams. And to have a further appreciation of the different immunoglobulins, there's the diagram on the right that shows you that IgG, IgE and IgD are all monomers. The IgA is a dimer and IgM is a pentamer. So that's five of them stuck together in this wheel-like structure. The other main blood test that we do is the serum-free light chain ratio. So when we think about our single plasma cell, each one in a healthy or unhealthy person, each cell can only secrete either kappa or lambda light chains. So they are restricted. Production in a normal healthy person is two to one in favor of kappa. The serum-free light chain ratio quantifies the levels of both kappa and lambda in the serum. This can't show you clonality, but it does show you the ratio and suggests clonality. So let's say your test had thousands and thousands, all of kappa and hardly any of lambda. That's not a normal ratio. And that suggests that there is a clone producing all of that kappa. Again, you can see a polyclonal response with the light chains, just as you can with the immunoglobulins. So when both are raised, that can suggest various other states of inflammation, infection, and so on. And we'll talk about that more in the case studies lecture. Be aware, though, that the ratio can also increase in kidney disease. It's rarely as high as in myeloma, but you can get an increase. This is because the light chains are cleared by the kidney predominantly. So when the kidneys aren't working so well, the light chains start to build up. And we can see a little bit of a kappa to lambda favoring to give you an abnormal ratio. Let's talk about urine tests now. You may have heard of the Bentz-Jones protein test. This used to be wide, widespread in practice, 
but it's no longer used and it's not part of the diagnostic criteria. That's because it's been replaced by the serum free light chain test, which is much more sensitive. Things that you can do to assess the kidneys and the protein activity with them is the protein to creatinine ratio, or PCR, and the albumin to creatinine ratio, the ACR. And you can do both of these and then compare them. So most people, when they have proteinuria, it's because they're leaking albumin. That's um, your vast majority of, say, nephrotic syndromes. So if your PCR is very high compared to your ACR, this suggests that it's not albumin that's leaking from the kidneys, but something else. So in this case, we'd be talking, of course, about immunoglobulins. So the bone marrow biopsy, so if you're suspecting myeloma, the hematology team will normally do one of these. I'm not going to focus too much on this, but just be, um, be appreciative of all these big, dark cells in that slide. That seem to have taken over. Not, there's a lot more of those than normally would be present. So how do we define myeloma? Many of you will have heard of the CRAB criteria from the olden days and these have been updated somewhat to something called slim CRAB. So hopefully this picture will, uh, will stick in your mind. So defining myeloma. Let's start with slim. So 60% of the cells in the bone marrow will be plasmacytes. Light chain ratio will be more than 100, and there should be more than one focal bone lesion on the MRI, and it's going to be five millimeters or more. CRAB is for calcium, elevation, renal impairment, anemia, and bone lesions. So the top ones, the slim, is telling you about the myeloma-defining events, whereas the bottom ones are telling you about the evidence of end organ damage, what the myeloma is doing to the rest of the body. These criteria should be accompanied by a more than 10% clonal population of bone marrow plasma cells, requiring us to analyze the cells in different machines and prove that they are the same clone. Other important points to make. Rarely you can have an abnormal light chain ratio without a paraprotein. So you'll see a abnormal serum free light chains but no paraprotein found. It's worth knowing about amyloidosis. So usually it's a smaller paraprotein and that's associated with heart failure and renal failure. That's beyond the scope of this lecture, so I'm not going to focus on it in the cases, but it's worth reading up on if you're interested. And be aware that a large number of the population will have a small paraprotein that will never cause harm but does need monitoring in case it becomes myeloma. So that's all for this video. So I'd like you to check out the case studies video where we'll pick this up. For the criteria, the International Myeloma Working Group has a really good web page, and this is the official criteria we work to. And our own Dr. Garg's got a really, really good lecture of myeloma diagnosis. If you type into Google RCP myeloma for diagnosticians, that should come up and it's free to read. Thanks.